This is about Revit events, um, Revit API events. Uh, people can create add-ins, but a lot of people don't really use like the events that are built into the Revit API. And there are a lot of events, and um, we'll go we'll go through a lot of them actually, and show you how they work. So the presentation description is right there, but really it's how using add-ins with um, Revit events can be really powerful. Um, so the, object, the you know, learning objectives are um, what, Revit, what Revit API is, what Revit API events are, um, where you can find the resources and support to create them, uh, example add-ins using API events, and then we're going to discuss their value, and we're going to step through code. There's sort of four or five examples we're going to actually step through. And all the code is going to be on GitHub, and you'll see it on the screen on the end. I asked this question earlier, but I'll ask it again. Um, anybody here created Adam before? Okay, a little, little wave. Um, how about uh, use Dynamo? Okay, a lot more Dynamo, of course. Anyways, um, Revit API is just a collection. API stands for Application Programming Interface. That's what API stands for. Um, many software have an API. If you didn't have an API, you couldn't customize the software. You couldn't create custom tools. You couldn't use Dynamo. You couldn't create an add-in, PyRevit. None of that would exist. So as you can see, um, Revit's API is pretty extensive because Revit's a pretty complicated application, as you probably know. Um, but even SurveyMonkey has an API. So I mean, that's a pretty simple one, actually. So um, again, that's, that's one thing I want you to get out of the slide is what the API really is. Just, all it is is a collection of objects you have access to to customize and create new tools. You wouldn't have IDA tools or CDC tools or any of that stuff without the Revit API. Um, there's a software developer kit. I wish I had my clicker, but I don't. But um, it's in the installation folder, as you can see on the bottom left. Um, it contains this help file right here, but also maybe 50 working examples of uh, using the API of uh, add-ins. You'd mostly see Sharp or some VB as well. And um, there's also a help file online called Revit API Docs that's it's more newer. Um, it's not always as up-to-date as the help file that comes with the SDK, but it's still it's very handy. I use it a lot too. But that's what an API is. It's really just a collection of objects. So these are the basic Revit or Autodesk learning resources. There's a lot of user blogs out there, as you probably know. Um, but really, um, the API Autodesk community is probably the biggest one right there, because there, there you can search for almost anything you want to try to do. And you can find an answer how to, how to do it, or, you, or you'll find the answer you can't do it. Uh, also, you can post a lot of questions in there, and you'll get answers in an hour or two about trying to, how you're trying to do something. You'll get example code from somebody. It's a great resource. I can't stress that enough that that is a great resource right there. Um, this is a very good help, a good first plugin that you could go through because it, it actually is a working, useful plugin. Or I, I call it plugin, it's really an add in. I, I hate all the different words that they call it, but it's called a Revit add in. But that's a great one to go through, by the way. The Revit help file actually has a developer guide section, and there's also a couple of walkthroughs in there as well uh, from scratch. So uh, and even the Revit help file, your online help file, there's examples on how to create an add-in. Also how to you know, retrieve elements and filter elements. So this is also a pretty good resource. The Building Coder is a blog that's been around for many years. Actually had its 10-year anniversary. A guy named Jeremy Tamek, um, he write, he, he's been doing it for 10 years. Now, and that, now it's also a Forge blog. So it's also both Revit API and Forge. But it's also a good resource to, to go through. I'm not going to lie. What I normally do is if I, can't, if I can't figure something out, I go to Google. I go, I go Revit API. How do I do this? Usually they come up with the API, the community will come up. Um, if not, um, you know, some other site will come up, but there's a lot of resources out there besides these three, but these are the Autodesk ones. So how add-in basically works. I threw this in late just for the heck of it, just um, because we're going to be looking at a number of different examples, but like the batch print tool that comes with Autodesk that you can, you can download and install. Really, it's, it's only two files. It's only this DLL has all the code in it. An add-in file or a manifest file is what loads the tool in Revit. So what are API events? Um, an event is really a, an Autodesk term, a Revit term. 
um, it's really a call to hook function in a lot of other software terminology. And an, an event or a hook function is really a way to, uh, to know when an action happens in Revit. So, and when that action happens, you can do something. So in this example, I have, I'm showing four Revit events. When the document starts to open, um, you can actually prevent the document from opening if you wanted to, or you could mine data, or you could do something else. You can catch that event or that action when it happens. That's what an event really is, or a hook function too. Um, so I'm showing four examples right here, but they all do the same thing. So any, you can actually have your code stop at any one, any one of these events and then do something that you may want to do. And I'll show you different examples of how we kind of use it internally, but also a couple examples that you know just make sense to maybe look at, think about all the tools to create. Okay, so these are all the events you have access to. Um, and we're not, you know, you have access to this presentation. You can't see the slide that well. I can't saw how big it is on the screen. But um, a lot of, I've used a lot of these events, but a lot of them are useless. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I don't necessarily care when somebody's edi editing a formula, which is over here. Um, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily care when somebody's transferring project standards, but you, but you can. You can know when that happens if you want. A lot of them, a lot of the document events are very useful, especially for my, yeah, uh, data mining or knowing how long it takes to synchronize a model. As you, as you can see here, there's a, a synchronized, a synchronizing with central. So when you start to synchronize, this event gets triggered. Um, when a synchronize finishes, this event synchronized with central gets triggered. So you can have a timer or a stopwatch and know how long it takes to synchronize your model. Simple as that. That alone is pretty valuable in a lot of cases. Um, there's a couple ones in blue that are, this one is not undocumented. This is really one, I'm, I'll show you today, it, it working, but when you click anything in Revit, on, on, on Revit ribbon, there's actually an event that'll fire and you can know when it happens. This is like an undocumented event that's um, in a different, in a different uh, DLL we have access to. Um, this one here is also in blue because it's not technically an event. It, it, it is a hook function though. The iOpdater interface is a little more complicated, but it's but much more surgical. Um, you can look for very specific things. These are more broad in a lot of cases, especially like document, um, uh, document, uh, where's that? There's one in here that's really broad, document, document changed events, really broad because anytime you make a change to your, your model, this event can get fired. So you add, delete, modify an object, this event can be fired, you, you know exactly what's deleted, what's changed, what's, what's added. But this one, I actually use this one as a tool we have in-house, where a, if a specific parameter in a drafting view changes, this event fires. It's very surgical. Um, and we'll go through an example of use actually, too. Let's keep going here. So there's three overall categories.